Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for longtime speakers to test drive a new talk idea. If you would like to give a 10 minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Diego with us and he'll be talking about database schema migrations with Doctrine. Please make sure you visit joined in after the talk and leave Diego some feedback. Diego, take it away. Hello. Good night, everybody. My name is Diego Saprisa. I work for Case. I'm from Uruguay. I'm one of the organizers of PHP and DevOps meetups in Monterey, Uruguay, an organizer of the Tech Meetup. It's an annual conference. Uh, tonight, we are going to talk about database schema migrations with Doctrine. So, to start, um, everybody use code versioning. If not, you basically are in trouble. So, but how about your schema, right? Um, I was I was thinking about this issue the other day, a bunch ago, and I was remembering the old ways that we used to deploy our code and and our schema, and our classic workflow. Remember uh, when I started with WordPress was basically dumping our database, our production database to our, our machine change the code and schema, and then override it. But the main issue about this process that some people is using, actually, is how about intermediate changes? Um, so while we are developing all this stuff, our site is changing. So that's a big issue um, if this is the way we deploy our apps. The other way of, of updating the database is basically doing schema synchronization, right? There are a bunch of tools that, that give us the ability to do it. One of them is MySQL Workbench, right? Um, but again, the, the main problem that we have to update the schema in, in our production server is, again, the, the same issues with changes in the middle. And this can be a bit tricky. The other way that, the other way that people used to do it is basically scripting. I did this a bunch of times and basically creating bash scripts to update us our schema. But the main point here is how we undo the that changes of the of the latest script. Um, and you guys I know that you guys basically don't work alone, right? So the the right now uh, another of the solutions of developing and pushing changes um, to our our database is to use a centralized database. I don't know how many of you guys have this schema, but in my environment, uh, basically we have a bunch of developers that are distributed. Um, and this gives us a lot of different databases versions um, on each one of the developers. And in this on, the, on this schema basically on this this way of working, the deployment um, of our apps are a big issue. Our main problem basically is our code and our schema are not synchronized. So the idea of this is basically to start talking about schema migrations. Um, you can go to Wikipedia if you want to have a perfect definition of it, but it's basically a manage is the management of incremental reversible changes to relational database schemas, right? So in practice, um, a database a database schema migration is basically a class that basic that have two methods, one's up and what and one's down. Basically, when you execute a migration, you are executing the up method, and we are when you are rollbacking that when doing the rollback of that migration, you are executing the down um, method. So the the basically the process uh, or the workflow when you guys work with this, is basically you create a migration file, you edit it, um, edit the up method and the down method, basically do a create, alters, tables, whatever, then execute the migration to basically push that changes to your database. Commit that that class and push it. So basically your coworkers or the other developers basically will pull your code, 
execute those migration and continue coding. So to do that, there's a bunch of tools to basically do that. To do this, um, uh, we use things. And right now, we're using Dr. Migration that you, you can grab the far from their GitHub account. Uh, you can install it in, in we use Zen Framework 2, so basically we use the model for Doctrine ORM um, in Zen Framework 2, but you can you can get it uh, with Symfony, etc. cetera. Uh, so after basically you download the file, you need to configure it, right? So you basically need, you need two files. One is the migrations.yaml, um, where you specify basically the name, the namespace of the classes that you are generating, um, the table name that we will talk about in, in a minute, and the migration directory is basically where it's the folder where you will have all these these classes that are that are going to be run on, on the migration. Then you need to basically configure the add this file migrations db.php. That's basically how you configure uh, um, doctrine to connect your database. And then basically you're set up. You if you run this far PHP doctrine migration dot far you will get a bunch of um, a bunch of options but we are going to focus only in in this ones and migrations dev and how to how to execute it how to generate and migrate and, and get in status. So the first thing that you're going to do to generate these classes is basically execute migrations generate. This will generate uh, the, the class that we were talking about. It's basically a timestamp and, and this will be the content, right? You will have the up method or the down method that you basically are going to edit and add your your SQL statements. Um, basically you just use add SQL to generate your SQL statements, or you can use basically uh, the internal API um, of Doctrine to manipulate the, the database. The benefit of using this is that you can use this basically in any database, and you don't need to just write SQL statement for MySQL or, or SQLite or whatever. After you do this, basically you store this, this, this class in in your your machine, you just execute migration status, and you will see at the bottom of it that's saying you that's a new migration to to execute. You can test it with a dry run. Basically, it will show you what's are basically the SQL statement that it's going to, to execute. After you did that, do this, you just execute migration migrate. This will basically will push the SQL changes to a database. But how um, I just want, right. But how Doctrine knows what migration you already executed? What basically Doctrine does is create a table, and that's the table name that we saw in the YAML. Um, that's called doc, in this case Doctrine migration versions, and in it it will like it will insert the timestamp of each of those migrations, so it will know and um, what migration were already push to the system. Um, and then after you do all this, you can basically roll back to any of those versions. Um, you, you, you just need to basically specify that timestamp. Um, we have a, like an internal rule in our team that we basically don't do uh, rollbacks because they're kind of dangerous. Yeah, you can uh, basically, if, you, if your app method is create table, your down metal method will be drop a table. So it's kind of, if you guys like it, do it. I don't recommend it. Um, um, so this is basically what Doctrine Migrations does. It's pretty straightforward. You just create the, the, the file, edit it with your SQL statements, commit it to, you commit it to your code and push it with your code. So basically, any any of this of the developers, when you grab the version of your code, will grab the, the exact version version of the schema that they that they know. So after they pull, they need to run the migrations. We use it not just for schema changes, 
we use it just, for example, to, to initialize databases. If we need uh, to create seeds or whatever, we just use this to insert basic information in our tables. Um, so I'm going to give you some tips about this. First, avoid complex rollbacks. Um, it's easier to restore back a backup. This is pretty important. Uh, in our team, we don't do rollbacks. I prefer to push a change or some or 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 even fix it. But we are kind of scared of rollback, but we don't like them, um, so we don't have it. There is an important. There is a. Uh, a very critical thing about Doctrine is if you execute migrations migrate zero, it will basically roll back everything. So it's it's on you if you do it, <laughs> really. Um, another tip that I can give you is decouple your code deploys from the database migrations. <clears throat> so instead of pushing everything, um, deploy your code, then and make deploy your code and then basically push the code that worked before and after migration. For example, in case of the Zen Framework 2, um, that we basically push modules that don't that basically are are not um, available with all the migrations. We do the migrations and then we enable the if we enable the the modules. That give us some flexibility and we don't break our code base. Um, so basically, try to do migration agnostic code. Add, add a model, don't use it till you migrate the schema and then use the model. And our tip is use nullable front keys to mig then migrate the data and then migrate the code and then basically migrate it again and test migrations in production backups. That's kind of obvious. Well, the, our base rule is backup your, backup your data before schema migration. That's something that you guys should do. Even this is kind of automated. Um, it's important to test your migrations. You can break everything. We have a lot of problems with basically foreign keys in the past. So this is basically it. This is very fast lightning talk about doctrine. If you have any question, I'm on free note. Um, just and you can talk about my talk and join the. So thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot. Um, thanks for joining us for Nomad, another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you would like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit, uh, join in, and leave Diego some feedback. <laughs>